Hi everyone, welcome to WIC channel. My name is Rifad. So today I'll be talking about the topic is, is there a crash of, uh, of the housing market in 2019 in Canada? That's like been the hottest topic. A lot of people are talking about it. And in my opinion, I would say, hell no. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys why I think there's no, there's going to be a crash in 2019 and go through all the details. So let's get into it. So uh, basically, Basically, I think of, of all, the re, all the reviews, I mean, all the reviews, I mean, all the articles I've been reading and the statistics I've been gathering, uh, I honestly think, like, if, we, if there was a crash, it would have happened last year. Uh, it would have mostly now we had, like, kind of soft landing um, because a lot of stuff had been introduced, like, you know, from the, uh, from the stress test that came in last year that kind of starts to ripple effect slowly with the rising interest rate uh that has kind of also kind of implemented and you can also see like in toronto and vancouver which is our hottest market the sales have declined last year so and people people are kind of noticing access to mortgage have been a bit slower so it's only have been declining and i would say kind of a soft landing and not a heavy landing and I, and and also these articles have been going on for like years. I think back in 2000, I can go as far as 2012. People are constantly against the Canadian housing market, saying, "Oh, the housing market is going to be dropped. It's going to severely drop." And they're predicting every single year, and they're giving it a try again. Um, I think after reading the articles, I will kind of show you guys the statistics and all this kind of stuff that we're going to show you guys. I honestly don't see it happening in 2019. Um, honest people are yes, yes, I agree that debt to income ratio is very high, but at the end of the day, are the debt manageable? I think so, yes. And uh, and also kind of show you guys all the details as per why not only the debt to income, but why uh, the, the people. I don't think there's a housing crisis coming uh, in terms of 2019 for Canada. Uh, so uh, let's go into it. So I go to the supercomputer and I can go through all the stuff, fantastic details with you guys. So let's go. Hey, welcome uh, guys. Thanks for joining me from the supercomputer. Uh, so as you guys can see, I have a computer sharing. So um, I found this article that pretty much resumes the whole factual stuff, which I which I find very interesting. It was released back in 2017, but this article is so well done. It contains the very good reasons and five main reasons, which usually people cover in different articles, but they kind of compact it into one, which is phenomenal. Uh, so kind of reason one is, main reason is Canada, they don't kind of incentive, like in US, US they incentive a lot to buy uh, houses because you can put your, one of the main reasons, one of the way you can do is put your interest uh, that you pay on, uh, on your tax income, which Canada they don't, they kind of put policies in place so you can get ownership, but they don't encourage it. They don't encourage it with the renting, owning. It's kind of they're playing a neutral game, which is in US they kind of push ownership. And secondly, is one of the another one of the great thing here is the houses is backed by the uh, by the government. Uh, most of example, if you don't put the twenty percent uh, in the minimum, you have to pay the the insurance fee, uh, which is the CMHL. Uh, sorry, sorry, CMHC. Uh, that and that is a crown corporation, which is uh, which is is federally backed the mortgage. So your whole mortgage is backed by the by the government, and it's a requirement by law. Compared to US, they didn't have it, right? They, yes, they had it. Like they can say they had Fanny and Freddie uh, uh, that kind of were backing it, but it was not really. It was implicit, like they say here, not what I call was there. So once they really needed, they were not there because it's not directly backing. Uh, because you can either pull out of that backing and like when once you drop below the example at like 20 percent goes like let's say 70 uh, 78 or 79 boom the insurance is gone right um so compared to Ca uh, canada it's like the whole insurance the whole hundred percent is backed that's one of the big thing we have here and also this is another one is um canada canada your mortgage is is attached to you compared to us it's not attached to you uh, so you can, certain states, I think there's Nevada and there's another state uh, that the, the mortgage is attached to you personally. But um, because when I say attached to you is example, you cannot just drop the keys and say I'm handing over and I'm gone. Uh, that's really, people think that happened a lot in US. When the example, the house value dropped, they said, you know, I don't want this house anymore. I, can, I don't want to pay it. Just like, you know, hand over the keys and they're gone. And the bank takes care of it, right? 
uh, compared to Canada, you're still stuck with it, right? You, you, you can either go declare bankruptcy and there's kind of ways you can figure a way, but technically you just kind of walk away from your debt or your mortgage. You still have, you owe that amount. So that's kind of a, that's another big incentive as per people don't think like, oh, I can walk away from a debt, a mortgage, right? And another one is, um, yeah, like you guys can see what I was talking a bit previously about uh, tighter restrictions is about like uh, like the insurance, right? Even as exactly said, when you go below 78%, the more they, they can, what you call the insurance is canceled compared to, um, compared to Canada, it's the whole 100% that's completely backed by the government. And um, and also like this type of policy, like I said, you have the strict, you have the stress test, uh, they have a bunch of other restrictions also, they reduced, initially you can go up to 40 years, I think back in 2008, uh, they reduced it to 35, it was 40 years back by the federal government, but now they reduced it up to 25 with the years they brought it down. Um, I have another article also that kind of goes through those kind of changes, big changes that they did through the years, uh, which I'll drop the link down to the description so you guys can have a read about that. And uh, another one is one of the big things is subprime, right? Subprime market is example the mortgages that are more risk riskier. We can say uh, credits that are more riskier. That's it's, it's present, but like you can see, it's like five percent of the whole market, right? U.S. it went to I think back in 2008 went up like 20, 30 percent uh, of the whole housing market uh, was subprime. Uh, it's very risky. We in Canada we don't have that kind of market or incentive, so it's not really pushed in uh, so that's kind of the, another thing that kind of helps right um, okay so that kind of kind of gives you guys as per uh, why I think this kind of restriction now let's go to go into a bit of statistics right um, so over here we have the total number of mortgages in the whole world in Canada and this section here is like errors is like mortgages people could not pay or miss the payments for three months they fall in that category so as you can, can see the percentage of that of the total mortgage it's less it's like negligible it's not even one percent of the total uh which is which is awesome right that means yeah there are people that are missing it like any other place in the world you can have a zero percent that's like rare but zero zero point zero zero but I, I think in the overall market when you have a zero point two four it's pretty good right it's, uh, it's good <laughs> ratio and um Another one. This is a, this is an awesome thing that I was able to procure. This is also from the website of the uh, Canadian Housing. It's the uh, CMHC. The same thing. Uh, what they do is they kind of they kind of put all the credits of Canadian on average as per how much you own mortgage, how much you line of credit, auto, and everything else. Kind of they put in it average monthly payments that has come into right. So me, what I did was I just kind of took it all. I said, okay, let's do it. I, in Mon I took the three big cities. I didn't do the rest. But example, uh, Montreal, they, they wrote roughly over, over $2,000 uh, in monthly payments. You have um, uh, in Toronto, they have 2600 And Vancouver is 2800 on average, monthly payments to pay their debt. Uh, but this is not saying that their debt could be like two times their income ratio, right? But I'm just saying their monthly payments, so they're all their creditors are happy. If they give their 2,800 or in Vancouver, they're all happy. Everybody's happy they got their payments, right? Uh, I took here, this is, um, you can get out the website called Payscale. You can get uh, an average income uh, on example in Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, you can get an average income as per how much they earn, right? Um, and like I, I kind of use another another website that kind of can give you their bi-weekly uh, pay um, after taxes. So I did it times two. So their monthly income here is of a family in Montreal with the average, I think it was 55,000. Um, I did times two, that's 110 per year. And I kind of did the calculation. So it gives around 5,200 per month. For an average um, person living in Montreal, family income, and that still gives them a remaining of three thousand three hundred, right? Which is really good, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's still good. There's a lot of money remaining. That means for me, my head is that they're still they're able to pay their creditors. That's awesome. And Toronto, same situation. You can six thousand remaining, six thousand one hundred twelve remaining after taxes. That gives them three thousand remaining right uh, so the creditors are happy 
um, in Vancouver, it's 5,992, and comes to they're able to pay the creditors, and comes to their remaining of family, family income, and family remaining of 3,000 something. And this is another category that I took here was I went to Statistics Canada. Uh, here, let me give this to you guys. Statistics Canada can gives you a medium household family income in the whole whole Canada, right? This is not area specific because I know when you example you work in Toronto, you get paid a bit more than when you were example further up north or something like that. So Statistics Canada said, okay, a person in Canada earns around seventy thousand, roughly. Uh, no, family, sorry, a family earns seventy thousand. So I said to myself, okay, let's let's calculate that too, right? Seventy thousand, um, a person that earning that and has to pay this much on a debt. This is after taxes, by the way, right? After taxes, family income. So they they having around three thousand seven hundred remaining in Montreal. We say they have around thousand thousand seven hundred remaining because this is their pay. In Toronto, uh, the example after taxes, they'll have four thousand remaining of a seventy thousand family income, and they'll have a thousand three hundred dollars remaining in uh, per month and in vancouver it's the same it's around 1200 no we they have a remaining of 4068 uh, after taxes so as you guys can see yes when you see when you took when you take this average here it's a bit it's a bit riskier because i know right now when i see this it's more than 50 percent right now it's more than 50 percent of right now they pay of the when they pay comes in more than 50 percent has to go to the debt payments, right? Which is riskier, but at the end of the day, when I see this, is they are still able to pay their dues, right? They are still able to pay their dues, and they have money remaining, which is which is okay, right? And I, I'm more than sure that, like, they're not all living in the, the Vancouver area, or like this is like a really average. I like, mean, they took seventy thousand, but it's not really people living a family income, a person living in Vancouver, right? Or Toronto itself, they will live sometimes in the areas, so their mortgage will sometimes be less. But in average, they still have money left, but it's not, they're still able to pay the creditors. That's for me the big important thing. So creditors are happy, they have money remaining so they can do other stuff with it, invest, keep money aside for rainy days and all kinds of stuff. Uh, okay, that sums about it. Uh, let me just make sure if I covered everything. Uh, yeah, I did. So, okay, let's go to the whiteboard and let's final this awesome video. Let's go. Thanks guys for joining me from the whiteboard. So uh, as you guys can see, I kind of went through all the details. Uh, for me, my main main things I kind of see is, yes, maybe the debt to ratio, it could be high, right? It could be two times, 100 times, 1.5 times more. Yes, all that comes into consideration, but are they able to pay their creditors? Are they able to pay their lenders? That's the main thing. And for me, when I see those kind of statistics, yes, they can. Uh, with also um, like I see the housing market cooling down so I think people are a bit more cautious when it comes through bu buying homes they're not really jumping into the market and buying in and also a couple of those reasons I said right the the, the mortgage is attached to you which is not the case in US right is attached to you so people are more like okay I don't go uh, like I cannot like I cannot just leave the keys and go away so it's kind of those situations and also don't forget that uh, with the um, with the rising rates so the rates are rising, so people like you know, like you know, they're more careful to not kind of buy a new home. Example, people that were less income thought before they could own, now they can't, so the access is going less. So it's kind of that also things uh, comes into comes into the whole global picture of the of the housing market, right? Uh, and and generally, I feel I I feel pretty confident. I think that we kind of really cool down that has soft landing yes are, are there more works to be done yes i think we can improve ourselves to put it more in the cautious area and be more careful so this stuff like it doesn't happen or doesn't really again start to the booming again and we go back in the vicious cycle so um so i think yeah that's about it i think and like you will see where it goes but i honestly don't see um, a crash happening in it like in 2019 uh, i think the housing market in canada has pretty much cooled off slowly um, and there's still more work to be done but it's cooled off to a proper level so and that's about it so uh you know what if you guys if you guys think the contrary just you know drop a comment i would love to hear from you guys what you think about the housing market in canada uh and give me your opinion i would love to know and if you guys love the video would you hit the thumbs up that'd be awesome because the small like does a lot of goals far uh, and also if you guys uh, have not subscribed go ahead and subscribe and i drop uh, a couple of links down below it's uh, 
for my Twitter. Uh, so go ahead and follow me there. And on my Facebook, uh, our Facebook page, I'm trying to start a community. So go ahead and like it and follow me there. Also, and uh, this whole kinds of reference, by the way, before I let you guys go, whole reference, uh, all links, I'll drop it down in the description so you guys can go and check it out yourself, read for yourself, and also uh, hey, go in depth. Uh, so yeah, I got reference to all my things I have. I'll put it down below so you guys can can go and explore, right? Uh, so that's about it, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and have yourself a wonderful day. Whoosh!